Woke up, it was a normal morning. Came out, gotta load up my monkey a little early. Oop, sheriff's calling me. It got stolen. Okay, I am on my bicycle, but I just got back from work and there has been lots of updates. Right now, I'm heading past my property where the motorcycle was driven out of and heading in the direction of the thieves. So, one of the big things that helps is uh, it woke someone up in the night that lives this way of town. So they went out and looked outside and saw a motorcycle getting followed by a car. So the thieves actually rode it out of town where me and the sheriff thought Definitely someone loaded it in a truck, it could be anywhere. Well now, this changes everything, because they're around. So, I'm heading down this gravel road that the people caught it on their ring camera with, and they live out in the country. And I'm gonna go see if I can find some tire tracks and follow them out. So this right here is the road that they were last seen on, and it turns into gravel, and in gravel are tire marks. Lucky for me, I have one-of-a-kind Shinko mobbers that are specifically made for a monkey. So if I see this tread, then I know I see my monkey. So where I where I'm at is right next to the house that they last saw it. So now I'm gonna start looking for tracks. So the best thing to do is to be looking in the sandier areas. I know from experience that loose gravel in the center is tough to ride on. So you gotta ride about where I'm riding with my bike. So they would have done the same. There she is. So the monkey is now in good hands again. Uh, there wasn't a ding, get, damn fly, get out of here. There wasn't a ding, dent, scratch, nothing, nothing. Uh, she was a little dirty, a little wet, which this is all new dirt. Um, I've actually had it for a minute now. So the guys who stole it were actually caught just before dumpster diving on camera out on Main Street here. And I actually have that video of them doing it, but for these douchebags protection, um, I will not show it. However, I do know who did it. Um, I don't know him personally, but I know him now. But I have no way of legally doing anything about it. Because there's no hard evidence of him dumpster diving and then him driving in the ring video. Because that ring video, the quality is so shoddy, um, there's no way to... You know connect the two you can't see who's riding the motorcycle obviously it just looks like a ball of light and you can hear the motor because it's loud so this guy's not gonna get in any trouble but I do know everything about him now <laughs> so this little guy was left abandoned but she is happy to be back home anyways we will finish out this video with some farm content now I have a bit to show you and uh, at the end of this video I will tell you a little bit about why it's been so long I haven't posted in a while. Let's check it out. Good morning everyone. We are back at the farm. <laughs> uh, so today we are going to hook up to this box scraper right here. Uh, we have this lane at our farm and I guess you can't see it but it's over here and it runs, you kind of see it there, it runs quite a ways. Basically we use it as access to our fields. Um, we're gonna put gravel on the back end of it because it's starting to wash out. So we got a big load of gravel uh, beside our shed. So we're going to use a loader, dump it, and then this box scraper to level it. So we're going to do that first thing in the morning. It's a job we've been trying to do for a while. 
Um, and then later on, we're probably gonna go spray some trees, which is something that we have to do for the government. Um, the government makes you, when you have any sort of, when you get paid, I should say, for the set-asides, which is grass, um, and you don't farm it, you gotta spray the trees inside of it. Why? I have no idea. I, it's a job I hate doing, but they make you. Otherwise, they won't pay you. So this is the loader we're gonna use. Um, as you can see, it's got a giant oil spill. Uh, it's leaking oil really bad. So, we've just been checking it rather than fixing it. Just make sure. It's on the low. Uh, I should probably add some, because while I run it is when it's going to lose it, so. I will at least start it, drive it over to our shed, fill her up with oil. The old saying, if she's leaking oil, she's got oil. Put like I don't know half a gallon in. All right, I found this. It's got almost two quarts in here, so I'm just gonna dump this in it and call it good. Do our work, and then I'm gonna do the funnel. So I'm gonna do our work, and then um, I'll have to check it next time I start it. I suppose once it settles, because I won't know if it's good or not since I ran it. Okay, so yesterday I said I was going to go spray some trees after we were done with our lane over here. Uh, we did do that, but I forgot to grab the camera. Rookie mistake. <laughs> but I'm trying to get back in the habit of uh, grabbing my camera every time I go somewhere. So dad just took off with a sprayer, and uh, the big sprayer, and he 
is spraying post-emerge beans on all of our acres that have, let's see, what was it? We had Fierce MTZ and then Authority Supreme, I believe, were the two we were going side by side with this year. And Dad sprayed all of his acres with the uh, cheaper Authority Supreme. And then me and Grandpa sprayed our acres with the Fierce MTZ, the expensive product. Well, the Authority Supreme is getting quite a few weeds. We've been around scouting the fields, and so he's spraying the Authority fields. And then uh, once they're done, we'll probably spray the Fierce fields. First, I should say the, the next piece of equipment to go through the corn is the combine. So the corn is basically done. <laughs> it's just growing. We're watching it grow. The beans need a little more upkeep. So the next pass after a second pass of herbicide is going to be uh, fungicide and insecticides. So basically we're spraying all of our herbicides now because weeds are still growing along with the beans and the beans are still, you know, yay tall right now. They're probably five, six inches tall, I suppose. Um, anyways, the weeds are right there with the beans, though. Um, once the beans get big enough to cover the rows and it kind of branches out and shades the rows in between them, uh, the weeds stop growing. But my job now, while Dad is out spraying, is I got to go mow with the bat wing and uh, clean up some of our fields that we got. So that's what I'm off to. Hey, she is a hot one today. All right, so yeah, I got a, I got this big mower behind me. You can probably see it. Just a wing. Um, so all the driveways for our fields, we got to go mow them and keep them cleaned up. Uh, that way, come fall time and now for the sprayer. Uh, you know where the driveway is and all the grass isn't, you know, four feet tall. So, got a little traveling to do. Right, get at her. So one wing won't go down, so what I gotta do is it tends to want to go down more if I lower it. Not this time though. Oh, there she goes. Those wings don't have any down pressure. It's just uh, gravity. The hydraulic cylinder goes into like a neutral state and it just kind of gravity falls. But then it has pressure pulling it up but no pressure pushing it down. So sometimes you literally gotta go push it. Okay. So this gets the blades going. Then you gotta raise the throttle up a little bit. And this should lower the whole thing. You don't want it all the way down, but almost. I got this kind of a tight spot. I got that little orange cable and then this sign right here that I gotta try to not hit. But I'm good. So you can kind of see where we've gone before. So I gotta just go along this corn here and then I'll do a little loop de loop come right back. So here I gotta go along these beans. I'm not doing a very good job right now. And then once I get up there, you'll be able to see kind of where I have to go and it turns that way. And uh, kind of goes all the way to those trees over there. This is where we were spraying trees. You can see those little uh, dead trees all over. And like I said, the government makes us spray those. Um, otherwise they won't pay you to have this as a natural set aside. Which to me, it makes no sense because if these trees are trying to naturally grow here, then uh, why not let them just grow? I don't understand that at all. I always hate spraying trees. It's, I don't know, you know, it just feels wrong. 
So this was actually uh, once a town, believe it or not. It never got officially built, but it was named, and there were streets, not paved, but they did have street names planned out. Um, on the original deed that Grandpa has, you can still see the original plans for the town. But they had a, the river is, there's a bridge right there, so the river is right there. The Iowa River, and they had a, a mill, like a sawmill, I think, right on the river. And uh, this was gonna be like a mill town, but it never took off. When I just went over, there's actually a little uh, bridge that remains, it's underground. But they made one to get over, there's like a little creek. So, Dad just took off with the big sprayer. I'm gonna take the little sprayer, spray French throws, and get this. There we go. So I guess there's a bunch of weeds on the outside of these fields that I gotta go spray now. We're gonna spray some uh, Roundup. I'm gonna use this Mad Dog 2020. So now I just gotta wait for this hose to fill it up. Right here. Not even halfway there yet. God dang! All right, we're about to get going. Got to put on my old Harley Davidson riding goggles. They got foam behind it to keep stuff out of your eyes while you're spraying and stuff. Well, that's what I use them for. Obviously, I used to use them for riding, but I don't have a Harley anymore. They're also photochromatic, which is pretty neat construction. Switch it to this back tank. So for those of you that are uh, well versed, <laughs> that is marijuana man. Yup. Ugh. Yeah, marijuana. The devil's lettuce. Be gone. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard that if your field, such as ours, has marijuana that grows wild in the uh, fence rows. There is a good chance that it used to be a hemp field. Because they used to grow it legally uh, to use for rope. I mean, everyone knows what the hemp is, you know, you can buy, still buy hemp. It's just, uh, it used to be grown quite a bit. Matter of fact, George Washington was a hemp farmer. Fun facts. Here's some. These right here are thistles. They are pokey. It's a very common plant, I'm sure. I bet even most of you guys know what a thistle is. Um, but they flower around the 4th of July. They turn purple. They're actually kind of pretty around the 4th. But anyways, um, 
they are very bad populators, so it's good to kill them early. Get rid of them. These will get like eight feet tall, and then uh, you can't combine through it, so it's a pretty problem, problematic plant. So, oh, Jesus Christ. Right here is a thistle patch, which you can see now why are a problem they grow in clumps like this and they're really hard to get rid of once they go to seed so each one of these uh, wild weeds that grows within our corn or soybeans is what you call a yield robber and corn believe it or not in a bean field is the worst yield robber so basically it's just a competition for whatever nutrients may be in the ground between the plants that we grow and the plants that grow wild. So we try to stay ahead of the game and just spray the crap out of these wild weeds. Well, I suppose I better get this over with. Every, every city person knows the phrase knee high by 4th of July and every time I say what do you do for a living I'm a farmer oh the corn gonna be knee high by the 4th of July I'm like roll my eyes yep <laughs> this is why all right if you can see me it is already past knee high it is it's up to the bits <laughs> uh, anyways it's uh, middle of June it's uh, early in the day, middle of June, like the song. Anyways, <laughs> middle of June, it's already past knee high. Happens every year. I don't know where this phrase, knee high by 4th of July came from, but it had to be like 200 years ago, back when Jesus was like four foot tall. By the 4th of July, this is gonna be double that size. Probably not tasseled yet, but we're really close. But it'll be over my head. Let's put it that way. Well, hello everyone. It's been a minute since I've made a video for uh, this Crooked Rose channel. I've been out west uh, on a motorcycle trip and now it is July 13th. So, if you can see the crops behind me are all green and tall now. It's only been a few weeks, uh, but they grow really fast, so. Um, these beans I'm in are now flowering, so they're about to make pods. And so we are spraying fungicide and insecticide. So what that is, is the fungicide you can think of as like a multivitamin, just keeps it healthy and growing strong. And the insecticide is pretty self-explanatory, where it just keeps any feeding insects off of the plant. And, uh also keeps it healthy. So last year dad did a test where he did uh, all his acres with both fungicide and insecticide and then he did a field next to it with just fungicide and there was a quite a big yield increase between the crops that had no fungicide and insecticide and then the fungicide and then the one with the insecticide had even a bigger boost. So we decided to, it's really cheap to apply per acre. So we decided to do all of our acres with fungicide and insecticide this year. So basically the only thing I gotta do is keep that little silver thing on the end of the hood, right between the row. Try not to run over any beans. And then keep it lined up over here and the boom off the ground and out of the plants. Um, there's obviously no squaring up. I just kind of got to pick a row and commit because otherwise you'll run over beans if you try to fix any mistakes. So, pretty simple stuff really. Got all the mapping going which you guys have seen. Oh my gosh, now I'm running over beans. Yep, yeah, this is what I'm out doing now. I'll probably take this on the end of a older video I'm assuming. Because I won't be able to make a full length video out of what we're doing right now. But this is actually the last tank. Let's see what I mean. I gotta pick and come in. Pretty good actually. So this is actually our last tank 
uh, that we're going to do for this summer of spring anything. So it's insecticide, fungicide, and then done. And there's nothing, no more weeds should be growing. Well, there's weeds that are still going to be growing, but hopefully they don't make any seed, so they won't be a problem for next year. And then right now, since everything's flowering, it's basically determined its yield already. Um, so there's any weeds that come now, it doesn't really matter. It just doesn't matter. And so the next thing to go through the corn and the soybeans will be the combine, believe it or not. So this is kind of it. This is our dead time for the year. It's the end of July, beginning of uh, August. It's kind of where uh, we don't really have much to do. I can show you guys what these beans look like and the flowers. There are uh, little tiny purple flowers on them. I'll show you what they look like. So, right down here, you can see on there, those are the purple flowers. And then they start to make little pods. I think that right there would be a bean pod. So these flowers just need to get pollinated. Then we'll have some more beans. And these definitely aren't done growing because they haven't even shaded the row yet. So they will actually get about waist high on a good year. So they're only about half their size right now. So they still have a long ways to go, which they have the end of this month, which we have half of July left and all of August. And then they won't start turning brown till about uh, late September. Um, so they still have a little ways to go. Yeah, if you uh, didn't know what I've been doing, because I haven't posted in a long, long time, like a month. So I've been out west for two weeks just traveling around on a motorcycle and I vlogged the whole thing but that will not be on this channel that will be on my other channel called the Odyssey I will put a link up to the video right here and then uh, yeah if you're interested in checking that out we go to Montana Idaho South Dakota Wyoming all those good places see a lot of cool stuff lots of national parks lots of national forest this a ton. Um, it was very fun. I went with uh, six other guys and we just had a grand old time. So yeah, check that out because that is going to be some solid content and a lot of videos. Um, so I will keep pumping those out much I can. Be sure to like and subscribe to that channel. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel because I'm trying to keep content going on both. The travel one's obviously harder because it takes a lot of time and money. Do, but it's uh, it's definitely one of my passions though is to get out there and travel so I'm hoping to be doing more of traveling stuff but until next time I will see you guys around